Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBakeCrochet.com and you've come to video number two of the Colorful Cables Throw. In this video, we are going to learn four new stitches and we're going to visit with two stitches that we've already learned from video number one. If you're finding this video for the very first time and you haven't seen video number one, let me recommend that you go back to the beginning because that's the beginning of this project and that video um, link is in the video description in the box below. So if you can go ahead and hit that, that'd be a great place to start. Okay, for those of you who have already gone through video number one and you've completed all that you needed to complete, we are ready to move on. Um, in this particular video, you're going to learn how to crochet the cable stitch that's right here and here. You're also going to be learning the popcorn and you're going to be learning the honeycomb stitch and we're going to be revisiting the neural stitch as well as the low front ridge and then we're going to learn how to do just simple ribbing. Okay, well let's go ahead and get started. Now we've finished this row. We're going to go ahead and switch to a new color. Let me show you which one I'm using. I am using, this is color number 254 and Let's go ahead and get this ready so we can go ahead and join this new color at the end of this row, pulling that through just like so. Okay, we're ready to trim the old color away. Make sure you leave a generous strand there so we don't have any trouble hiding these away later on. All right, so now we are going to, let's go ahead and use the correct yarn there, there we go. Chain one and turn. And now we're going to work the same rows that we worked down here. We're going to work the low front ridge and then we're gonna work the single crochet in that remaining loop. I'll go ahead and start you on this, but I'm going to go ahead and do these two rows. Remember we start this one in the second stitch working in the front loop only. We work a slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. And then on the return pass, we're going to chain one and then we're going to work a single crochet in the remaining loops right across there. So go ahead and work the low front ridge rows one and two. After completing row one and two of the low front ridge, this is what your row should look like. Now we're ready to move on to the, the cable stitch and this is one of my favorite stitches and I'm going to try to go slowly but just as a reminder if you need to ever slow down the video right down here on the bottom for right handers right over here on the bottom for left handers is a little icon that looks like a gear. If you just click on that gear, you can actually slow down the speed. For cell phones, it's up in the upper right hand corner. There are three vertical dots and if you click on that, it will also do the same by, you, you'll be able to select how fast you want the playback speed. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the cable stitch with a chain one. We're gonna work a single crochet in the first stitch now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, skip two, one, two, and in that next stitch we're going to work a single crochet and we are working through both loops. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to work in the chain three that we just created, just working in one side of that V, single crochet in each of those three chains. Okay, after we've done that, we're going to work a slip stitch in that first single crochet. Slip, stitch, and now we're going to turn our work back. Um, I like to bring my yarn back over this side of the hook. Or you could just turn the other direction, but then the afghan will be all twisty-turny, but anyway. So now we're going to work in the two stitches that we skipped. We're going to work a single crochet in each one. Notice that I pulled the cable down in front in order to find those stitches because they are worked behind this cable section that we just completed. I'm going to do this a couple more times for you. 
chain three, one, two, three. Now we've already worked in this stitch. We're going to skip the next two stitches that we have not worked in. And in the third stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. Now we're going to turn our work to work in the chain, chain, work one single crochet in each of those three chains. And in that single crochet that was here, we're going to work a slip stitch. Now I'm going to bring the yarn back over this side of the hook to bring the yarn to the back and with the front side facing again we're going to pull this cable down and we're going to single crochet in these two stitches that we just skipped. One, two, and now we have two cables. Let's do that one more time. Chain three and skip the next two stitches that we have not used and then single crochet in that third stitch. Now we turn, working in the chain three, we work one single crochet in each of those chains. And then we work a slip stitch in that single crochet. I'm going to bring my yarn to the back side of my work and with the front side facing, we're going to work a single crochet in each of those stitches that were skipped and do make sure that it is behind the cable. So this is what you're going to be working all the way across the row. After working this cable stitch all the way across, you should have one stitch remaining and we simply work a single crochet in that stitch. Okay, now we're going to work row two of the cable stitch. I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. And this is what you're going to do behind each cable. First of all, we chain one to begin row two and we single crochet in that first single crochet, which was the extra stitch that we just completed. Now working behind each cable, you'll see the back side of the single crochet here and then here, here and here. And this is what we're going to do in that first single crochet behind that cable. We're going to work two single crochets and then we're going to work one. We're going to pull this back a little bit here, this where the cable was connected, and we work one single crochet there. That's the behind the first cable. The next cable, we see the next stitch here. We're going to work two single crochets and then we pull the back on the cable a little bit for that other stitch. It's kind of sharing, doing double duty. We do one there. And behind the next cable, two single crochets and then one single crochet here. So let me turn this around just to show you. Behind each cable, there should be one, two, three stitches. One, two, three stitches. Maybe it's easier to see it this way. So behind each cable, you're going to have three single crochets. And that, that would be two, just like we've done. Two in that first stitch and then one in the next. So go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across. So after working those three single crochets behind each crochet cable, we're going to work one last single crochet in the turning chain. And this is the way the back side should look. And here's the front side. Now the next two rows, we're going to work the low front ridge. We chain one. Just as a review, I'll show you how to start this. Remember, this is the one that's only worked in the front loop. We're going to skip the first stitch and we're going to slip stitch in the front loop only of each stitch all the way across the row. And then at the end of the row, we're going to chain one, turn, and then we're going to single crochet in each remaining loop, which will be right here. Okay, so go ahead and work rows one and two of the low front ridge. Okay, I've worked this all the way across the row. Now I am ready to switch to my next color. And let me show you the number on this in case you are following along with my color uh, pattern. It's color number 220. It's kind of like a nice light 
um, yellow color. Okay, this is also color number six. I should have mentioned earlier, this is color number five. And again, you can just refer to the pattern in the chart to get those details, should you have any questions. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to finish this last single crochet by pulling in this color, just like so. I'm gonna pull that down, okay. So now I am going to make sure that you leave a nice strand there for working in later. So go ahead and chain one to hold that in place. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this yarn. Give it a nice generous strand there. And now we're going to turn with the front side facing. And we are going to begin working the popcorn rows, but I'm going to do something very important before we do that. We're going to change to a larger size hook. Make sure you do that because otherwise what happens if you don't change to a larger size hook is this section tends to pull inward a bit. It tends to be worked a bit tighter and you don't want to do that. So make sure that you go ahead and change to the larger size hook. I'm using a size K, which is 10.5 or 6.50 millimeters. Okay, so we're going to begin by working a single crochet in that first stitch. We're going to chain one. We're going to skip the next stitch. And in the next single crochet, we're going to work four single crochets. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to pull the loop up. This is how we're going to make the popcorn. We reinsert the hook into the first stitch. Move this out of the background. Into the first stitch. And then we hook the loop from that fourth stitch and then we pull it through. And they should have a nice little popcorn. Now we give it a chain one, and now we're ready to continue. So after we do that, we're gonna skip the next stitch, which is right down here, and then we work a single crochet in the next stitch. And this is gonna be our repeat all the way across. We're gonna chain one, skip the next single crochet, and then we work another popcorn which is four single crochets. And once we make those four single crochets, we pull up a loop, we insert the hook into the first top loops of that first single crochet of the cluster, hook that loop there, pull it back down, pull it through, and give it a chain. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, in the next stitch. Okay, so this is what we have. I'll do a couple more with you. Then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and we work the popcorn, which is four single crochets. Go ahead and move my yarn so we can get that out of the way. So after those four single crochets, pull up a loop, Reinsert the hook into the first top loops of that single crochet. Put that over the hook, pull it through, and now give it a chain. Now this chain, you want to make sure that you don't work it too tightly because we are going to be working in this chain on the next pass or the next row that we work. So skip the next stitch, single crochet, and the next stitch. I'm going to do one more. Chain one. Skip the next stitch, work a popcorn, which is four single crochets, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the first single crochet, put that loop onto the hook and pull through and give it a chain. So this is the beginning of that popcorn row. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. After working that all the way across the row, you have one more stitch left. Go ahead and work a single crochet in that last stitch. We're not working in the turning chain. Go ahead and turn. Now we're beginning row number two of the popcorn stitch. Go ahead and single crochet. I'm sorry, make a chain and then single crochet in that very first stitch. And this is the repeat all the way across. We're gonna chain one, 
I'm going to skip this single crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in the top of that popcorn, in that chain one space, chain one, and now we are going to um, skip the rest of this popcorn. We're going to work in this chain one space, which is right here. Single crochet there, chain one, skip this single crochet, and then single crochet in the top of that popcorn, chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in that next chain one space, chain one. Then we skip the single crochet and we single crochet in the top of the popcorn stitch. So that is going to be the repeat all the way across the row. Let me go ahead and show you what that will look like. I'm going to show you the other side just to show you how, how even this should be. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Just wanted to give you one additional piece of information. At the end of row one, you should have a total of 36 popcorns worked. If you have fewer or more, you may need to pull that row out and try again so that you have the stitch count remaining the same. At the end of the row, we should have one stitch left. Go ahead and work a single crochet in that stitch. Now we're ready to begin row number three. So go ahead and chain one, single crochet in that first single crochet. Now we're going to chain one. Now this is where it's important. We are going to be alternating the popcorn stitches. So as you're doing these rows, if the popcorns ever start being on top of the other popcorn two rows down, then you need to um, adjust that. Okay, so after that first single crochet in a chain one, we're going to skip this single crochet and in this chain one space, we're going to work another single crochet. Chain one. And now in between these two single crochets, I'm sorry, these two popcorns here, there's another chain one space right here. And that's where we're going to work our popcorn stitch. And we do it just the same way that we did the others with four single crochets. Now we pull up that loop, insert the hook into that first stitch, pull the loop through, and give it a chain. And now we skip the single crochet, and in the next chain one space, we work a single crochet, chain one. So you're noticing that we only are working in the chain one spaces as we go across. I'll go ahead and do the next one. We skip that single crochet and working in the chain one space, work four single crochets for that popcorn, pull up a loop, insert the hook into that first stitch, put that loop on the hook and pull it through, and then a chain one, and then again, single crochet in the next space, followed by chain one, and then another popcorn. So do you see how, how these stitches, the popcorns are alternating? That's what we want to do. So go ahead and finish this repeat all the way across the row. After working this repeat all the way across, we have one stitch left. We'll go ahead and work a single crochet in that last stitch. Now we're ready to turn with the back side facing and we're going to begin row number four of the popcorn. We're going to chain one, single crochet in that first stitch, and then single crochet in the next chain one space, which is the top of that popcorn. Then we chain one, and then right here, we're going to work a single crochet in that next chain one space, chain one, and the next, uh, we're going to skip this single crochet, and then we're going to work a single crochet in the top of that next popcorn stitch, chain one, single crochet in the next chain one stitch, which is right here, right next to the popcorn, chain one, and then single crochet in the next chain one space. Of course, I should have said skip that single crochet and then chain single crochet in that chain one space on top of the popcorn. So go ahead and repeat this all the way across the row. I wanted to work the last few stitches of this row with you so that, so there's no confusion. Okay, so I've been working in the, I've just worked my last 
single crochet in the top of the popcorn stitch and chain one and then I'm going to work in the next chain one space chain one skip that single crochet work in that next chain one space and then we do not chain one at the end we go ahead and we just work a single crochet in that last stitch let's go ahead and turn and see what we have Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now we're ready to begin row five, which is very similar to row number one, except that we're not working it into a row of single crochet. So I'm gonna work row five for you, or begin row five with you. We're gonna chain one, single crochet in that first stitch, chain one, and now in this first, we're gonna skip this single crochet, and in the first chain one space, we are going to be alternating these popcorns, so we go ahead and we work a popcorn stitch, which is those four, four single crochets, and then reinsert the hook, and pull the loop through, chain one, and now we skip the next single crochet, single crochet in that next chain one space, chain one, skip the single crochet, and work another popcorn in this next chain one space. Again, we're only working in the chain one spaces. Okay, so go ahead and finish this popcorn, chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet. And also notice how these popcorns are alternating with each row. If your popcorns don't look like this, alternating like so, then you need to um, step back and maybe watch this part of the video again on the popcorn rows. Okay, after you complete row number five, let me give you a short assignment. So after you complete row number five, and let me explain how you're going to end this row. Okay, we're going to end this row by working a single crochet here, a chain one, and then a single crochet in the last stitch. Now after you complete rows, or row number five, you're going to repeat rows two, three, four, five, one more time, and then follow that by another repeat of rows two and three, one more time. So after you complete the 11th row, or the last repeat of row three of this uh, popcorn stitch, you should have a total of six rows, like one, two, three rows there of popcorn. You should have six rows of popcorn, and then I will show you how to work the row to discontinue the popcorn stitch. So go ahead and finish those rows now. And we have been using the size K hook, but we're going to go back down one size to our size 10 or J or 6.0 mill zero zero millimeter crochet hook. Now we're ready to work the row to discontinue the popcorn stitch. We'll begin this with a chain one. Now we're not gonna work in the first single crochet of this round. We are only going to work in the chain one spaces until we get to the end of the row. So we're gonna start in the first chain one, which is the top of the popcorn. We're gonna work two stitches there and the next chain one space is here. We work two single crochets in that space. And then we're gonna alternate back and forth. At the top of that popcorn, we work two stitches. And in the next chain one space, we work two single crochet stitches. And so on and so forth, all the way across the row. At the end of the row, you should have a total of 100 and 46 single crochets. It's very important that you have this total. So let's go ahead and finish that across the row and I'll show you how this row ends. After having worked this all the way across, you have one chain one space left here and a single crochet. In that last chain one space, work one single crochet and in that last single crochet, work the last single crochet of the row. You should have exactly 146 single crochets after the end of this row. Now we're gonna back out that last single crochet because it is time for us to switch to our new color. 
Our next color is color number 255. So let's go ahead and start this. So we're just going to pull in this darker color peach and we're going to chain one. And let's go ahead and trim this other color. Okay, so now we're going to turn. And let me just tell you what you're going to do. And you can back the video up should you need stitch support. We are going to work another low front ridge, rows one and two. And then you're going to work the cable, rows one and two. And then another low front ridge, rows one and two. So those are six rows, two, two, and two. Go ahead and repeat this section starting right here. I'll go ahead and get you started, but I'm going to just have you go ahead and do that. If you need additional instruction, you can just back the video up to this section here where the light peach color begins. And so the first thing we're going to do is skip that first stitch just as a reminder. And the low front ridge is worked only in the front loop working the slip stitch along one side and row number two is working that single crochet and then after you do that go ahead like I said work the two rows of the cable stitch and then two more rows of the low front ridge. At the end of the second set of the low front ridge rows I'm going to go ahead and change to the next color and let me show you the number here. It's color number 204 which is this really nice gray color. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that through and I'm going to chain chain two. One, two. I'm going to go ahead. Now we're ready to begin the honeycomb stitch. We are going to skip the first stitch which is right here along the edge and we're going to skip the next two stitches as we begin this we're going to work a front post treble crochet around the next stitch just like this and yes you can work these post stitches around single crochets works just the same way we just bring the hook around as if we're giving the stitch a belt okay after working these two front post treble crochets now we're going to work front post treble crochets in the two stitches that we skipped but we're going to be coming in through the back because we're going to work them behind these stitches. If we just come into the hole like this and wrap the hook around. It's a little bit tricky but very doable. Come into the hole. We're going to work. Sometimes if you put your thumb up in here it's easy to, to see the stitch or just pull these stitches down. Okay, that's the first side. Now we're going to skip two more stitches, one, two, and we're going to front post treble the next two stitches. Let's try that one again. Got away from me. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. just like that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work that all the way across. Let me, let me try another one for you just to make sure that you understand it. Skip these next two stitches. Front post treble. The next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. We come into this hole and we work the stitch around the stitch there and do that in the next one. And then for the next four stitches, we skip the next two stitches, front post treble 
in the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, front post treble, and those two stitches that we skipped. Okay, let's stop. And notice how these form a large V. It goes down and up, down and then up. So you're going to want to work this all the way across the row. After working all the way across the row, you should have 18 sets of eight that form these large V's. It's a really good idea to go ahead and do a visual check to make sure that they are going down, up, down, up, you know, like that e evenly all the way across. Um, that way your honeycombs will look like honeycombs. Okay, so now we have one stitch left and we're just gonna work a double crochet in that last stitch. Now we're ready to work row number two of the honeycomb stitch. We're going to go ahead and chain two and go ahead and put a double crochet in that first stitch just like that. Now this is going to be an easy row. We are just going to work back post double crochets all the way across the row in each stitch. We're not crossing anything. We're just going stitch by stitch as we go along there. So go ahead and work those back post double crochets all the way across. After working the back post double crochets all the way across the row, we're gonna work a half double crochet in the turning chain, just like that. Now we're going to turn and we're ready to work row number three of the honeycomb stitch. Um, now this is very similar to row number one, except we're going to switch what we did here. We're going to work the four stitches that we worked like this on this side and the four stitches worked like this on the other side so that we end up with a honeycomb that looks like that. All right, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and start it. We're going to skip, <clears throat> excuse me, the half double crochet. We're going to skip these first two back post double crochets and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. This is a very visual pattern, so if you don't remember which to do when, you can just simply step back and look at what you're working on. Okay, so now we're gonna front post treble in these two stitches while we work in front of these two. Okay, so you can see it's starting to form. After that, we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're gonna front post treble in the next two stitches. And this is the tricky part here, working behind these two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, and we're going to get the second one, which is right there, and if you, you can pull it up just like that by pulling down this part of the cabling. Okay, so now you can see the shape that we're going for. I'll do that for you one more time. I'm going to skip the next two stitches, one, two and we're gonna front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped, working in front of those last two stitches. Now we're gonna skip the next two stitches, one, two, front post treble, in the next two stitches. Working behind these last two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. You can see that stitch right there. If you pull that back, it might be easier to see. 
Okay, so I've worked worked two repeats of that. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. After working that all the way across, we're going to work a double crochet in the top of that last stitch. Now we're ready to work row number four, which is exactly the same as row number two. We're going to chain two. We're going to work a double crochet in that first double crochet. And then we're going to work a back post double crochet over each stitch all the way across the row. I'll go ahead and work a few of them for you. Okay, so go ahead and work those back post double crochets all the way across the row. Once you get to the end of the row, you're going to do just like you did at the end of row two. We're going to work a half double crochet in this turning chain space. And then once you complete that, we're going to repeat rows one, two, three, and four two more times. So when we're finished, you should have three honeycombs, one, two, three, just stacked on top of each other for these rows across. So go ahead and work those rows. At the end of the last row, we're going to work a half double crochet in the turning chain space. But before we complete the stitch, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to our number six yarn. This is the same color as the popcorn stitch that we just completed. Now, of course, if you want to use a different color scheme, you are free to do whatever you want to do, but I'm just showing you uh, what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to pull that on through to change the colors and let's go ahead and give it a chain. And now I'm going to trim this color down here, give it a nice long strand so it'd be easy to hide once we're finished. And now we're going to turn with the front side facing. And we are going to once again work the low front ridge rows one and two over the next two rows. So go ahead and again, I'll just start you off on this. We're going to skip the first stitch working only in the front loops. As you remember, we're going to work slip stitch in the front front loop only all the way across the row. And then at the end of this row, we will chain one, turn, and then we're going to come back the other direction and we're going to work single crochets in the remaining loop. So go ahead and do those two rows, low front ridge row one and two. Okay, now we're ready to begin the knurl stitch. And for this, this is a four row repeat. Okay, so we're just going to do one repeat of this. We're going to chain one and for the first row, we are just simply going to work single crochets all the way across the row. So go ahead and work that row. After working that single crochet row all the way across, it's time to work row two of the knurl stitch. Now this is an interesting stitch in that it is worked in the opposite direction. Okay. And we're only going to work in the front loop as we go this direction across. So let's go ahead and we're going to start in the second loop. I'm going to bring my hook up into that loop right there. We're going to pull the loop through, yarn over, and pull through two. And go into the next loop. Okay, working in the front loop only, pull a loop down, yarn over, and pull through two. It is definitely a little awkward if you've never done this before. But what I would recommend as you work this stitch is do not try to control where the loops fall, but just let them fall naturally. Okay. I have done this many times, so if yours doesn't look exactly like this, don't fret. Just practice it for a little bit. Um, this is awkward. <laughs> at best, and I do tend to go much slower on this row. 
but I do believe that it, it yields a beautiful texture for the throat or I wouldn't even bother with it. Let's see if you can see. Um, I'm trying to give you the best possible camera angle. You can see the front loop there. I just come up, yarn over, yarn over the back, and pull through too. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. After working this knurl stitch all the way across, you come to the last stitch and we're going to work a reverse slip stitch. You simply stick the hook in, pull the loop through, and pull the loop through and give it a little, little bit of a tug so that it's not um, too loopy, you know, standing out there on the end. Now we're going to chain one and for row three of the knurl stitch, we're going to work in the back loop only and we're going to work single crochets all the way across that row. So after we finish this row all the way across working this single crochet, we're going to work a chain one, turn, and then we're going to work single crochets all the way across in the row one more time. So go ahead and complete this row working in the remaining loop and then chain one and then working in both loops um, work single crochets back the opposite direction. So go ahead and work those two rows. After completing those two rows of single crochets, one worked with in the back remaining loop and then the other worked with the back side facing. I've gone ahead and turned and now we're ready to work the low front ridge which is a repeat of rows one and two and I'll go ahead and start you on this again. We chain one, skip the first stitch and working only in the front loop, work slip stitch in in that front loop only all the way across the row. So I'll go ahead and do that and then after you do that we chain one turn and then we work a single crochet in the remaining loop of each stitch across. So go ahead and do low front ridge rows one and two. Okay this is what you should have after working that low front ridge, those two rows. But let's just pause a minute and just take a look at some of the additional textures that we've completed so far. I'm really, really enjoying the way this is coming out. Let's go ahead and look at the, the very beginning again where we've been. Okay, I will show you a better overall picture once we complete this. Um, but now it's time for us to change to another color. Okay, now working the last stitch of the row. We're going to pull that through and we're going to go to color number three which is the light tan. Go ahead and pull that new color through and we're going to give it a chain two, one, two and turn to work the next rows. First thing we're going to do as we begin the ribbing rows is to work a half double crochet in that first stitch. This is very important. This is going to help with the stitch count. Then we're going to work a front post double crochet followed by a, if I can get the hook in there, there we go. Let's go around that single crochet. It's a little tricky but very doable. Then a back post double crochet. So go ahead and repeat that all the way across the row. A front post double crochet followed by the back post double crochet. After working this all the way across, we're going to work a half double crochet in that last stitch of the row, just like this. Okay, now I'm going to turn. We're going to chain two, one, two, and this is going to be what we do for rows two through eight of this ribbing. We're going to start with a half double crochet worked in that first stitch and then front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet all the way across the row. So go ahead and work rows two through seven with front post and back post and make sure that you end with a half double crochet in the last stitch. Let me show you this. Okay. So the last stitch here, make sure that you work 
a half double crochet in that stitch. At the end of row number eight of the ribbing, we're going to go ahead and work that half double crochet in that last stitch, but we're going to pick up color number six, which was the same light yellow that we were working before we moved to color number three. And we're going to go ahead and chain one and turn. Now we are going to repeat the low front ridge two rows and the four rows of the knurl and the two rows of the low front ridge one more time on the other side of the ribbing. So go ahead and work those rows. Well, I hope you enjoyed video number two. I look forward to seeing you in video number three as we continue this project. Um, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe. And if you've liked this video, just give it a thumbs up, please. And that would be great. And by hitting that little notification bell, you won't miss the next video, which is coming very soon. God bless. Bye-bye.